In this problem, a wastewater treatment plant uses an activated sludge process following a primary clarifier. The plant receives an average daily flow of 3 mgd with an influent BOD5 concentration of 250 mg per liter and an influent suspended solids concentration of 300 mg per liter. The treatment process consists of a primary clarifier that removes 35% of the incoming BOD5 and 60% of the suspended solids, an aeration tank that follows the primary clarifier and removes additional BOD5 and suspended solids. The combined treatment processes of the primary clarifier and aeration tank together remove 5,645 pounds per day of BOD5 and 7,055 pounds per day of suspended solids. What is most nearly the BOD5 removal efficiency within the aeration tank? So the first thing we can see in this problem is recognize that we need to find the BOD5 removal efficiency of the aeration tank. This means that all of the information provided about the suspended solids can be ignored. Let's find the answer to what we're looking for in four steps. So for step one, our goal is to find the total BOD5 entering the plant. To solve for this, we simply need to multiply the average daily flow of 3 mgd times a conversion factor of 8.34 pounds per million gallon over milligrams per liter and then multiply this times the influent BOD5 concentration of 250 milligrams per liter. And we can see that the total BOD5 entering the plant is 6,255 pounds per day. For step two, we need to find the BOD5 removed in only the primary clarifier. So let's draw out this process really quickly. We can see that after the flow enters the plant, it is first passing through the primary clarifier and next going into the aeration tank. After that, we are assuming that there is still some amount of BOD5 left after each treatment process. And as noted in the problem statement, the combined BOD5 removed from both the primary clarifier and the aeration tank is 5,645 pounds per day. Now, the problem provides us with the removal efficiency of the primary clarifier. Since this is the first stage of the treatment process, let's multiply this value of 35% times the total BOD5 coming into the plant. We can calculate a removal at this stage of the treatment process of 2,189.25 pounds per day. Now in step three, we want to find the amount of BOD5 removed in the aeration tank alone. We can solve this easily since the problem tells us how much BOD5 was removed by the combined processes of first the primary clarifier and next the aeration tank. And we just solved for the amount of BOD5 removed in the primary clarifier alone. So let's just subtract the amount removed by the primary clarifier from the total amount of BOD5 removed to get the amount removed by the aeration tank alone. And we can see that this gives us an answer of 3,455.75 pounds per day. Now finally, in step four, we can calculate the efficiency of the aeration tank. We know the total amount removed by the first process, the primary clarifier, and now we know how much was removed by the second process, the aeration tank. So we just need to determine how much was present directly before the aeration tank process, and then divide that amount specifically removed by the aeration tank 
by that number to get our efficiency. So the amount present directly before the aeration tank can be found by subtracting the total BOD5 going into the plant minus the amount removed by the primary clarifier alone. Then leaving a variable of x for the efficiency of the aeration tank, we can see that what comes out on the other side is going to be the amount removed in the aeration tank alone, which we just calculated for in step three. So if we solve for x, we can see that we get an answer of about 85%, which is the second of the answers listed in the problem. So in summary, this problem is pretty easy if you know a few things. First, you have to notice that you are supposed to ignore the information about the suspended solids and focus on BOD5. Next, you need to understand that the treatment processes occur linearly, one after the next. Finally, you do also need to be aware of how to calculate pounds per day from million gallons per day and milligrams per liter using the 8.34 conversion factor. As mentioned a few videos ago, this is a good conversion factor to sort of have memorized, or at least know when you need it and where to find it. So if needed, you can find it in chapter six of the reference manual under the section titled Solids Loading Rate. And that's all it takes to solve this problem.